Hey bees, I'm Marie from Humble Bee and Me, and today we are making this really lovely skin brightening toner mist. The star ingredients in this formulation are the powerful brightening duo of N-acetyl glucosamine, or NAG, and niacinamide, also known as vitamin B3. I have complemented these two gorgeous ingredients with some panthenol, also known as vitamin B5. So we got the B3 and the B5 for that like B vitamin super awesomeness. Uh, panthenol is a wonderful moisturizing and skin soothing ingredient. I've also included some anti-inflammatory witch hazel distillate and a hydrosol. You can choose whatever hydrosol you like. I used sweetgrass hydrosol because I love it. Uh, and it also <laughs> helps cover up the scent of witch hazel, which is not amazing. I've included some sodium lactate, which is a fantastic non-sticky humectant. And then I've used GeoGuard Ultra for our preservative, which is not only a preservative, but also has some great you know, moisturizing benefits of its own. Really cool, or multi-purpose uh, preserving ingredient that I've really been enjoying playing with. If you'd like to learn more about any of these ingredients or find substitutions for them, please make sure you look them up in the Humble Bee and Me encyclopedia at humblebeeandme.com. And also make sure you are reading the full partner blog post on this formulation to learn more about it. Every formulation I share has a partner blog post with a list of substitution suggestions at the bottom of it, and then with everything all written out. And also, uh, as of sort of earlier this year, I've been including a list of recommended sort of further and related reading to help you in your formulation journey. Making this is really, really easy. Uh, I have incorporated a little bit of heat into the process simply because the GeoGuard Ultra takes a while to dissolve. If you don't, I have any heat in there, but you could totally cold process this if you wanted to. You just will need to wait a while for the GeoGuard Ultra to dissolve before you can carry on your merry way. The pH of this comes out to a very skin happy, approximately 5.15 to 5.2 all on its own. So it's just, it's really easy to make. It's really lovely. I'm really enjoying this in my skincare routine. What I've been doing is uh, gently cleansing, mist, 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 and then topping off with a heavier moisturizer. So like an emulsified cream or lotion or an oil serum, kind of depending on the day and you know what I'm feeling. I think that is enough chat. So yeah, let's go get started. So we're going to begin by combining the ingredients for our heated phase. And so this isn't strictly necessary, but it does speed things along nicely. So the reason we are heating things is because our preservative, GeoGuard Ultra, takes a wee while to dissolve. Uh, hours and hours, I find, at room temperature. And it is heat stable. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our preservative. So in here we have 0.4 grams of GeoGuard Ultra. And to that we're going to add 11.2 grams of water and 10 grams witch hazel distillate. And we will heat this together so that the GeoGuard Ultra dissolves faster than it would uh, typically be inclined to. So since we will be heating it, I am going to weigh this and note the weight so that we can replace any water that is lost to evaporation during heating. To heat this, we're going to use a water bath. So this is a small saucepan that has about two centimeters of water in the bottom of it, or about two thirds of an inch. It doesn't really matter how much water is in there as long as it's enough that it's not going to like simmer dry really, really quickly and not so much that, you know, our beaker's kind of floating around in here like a message in a bottle. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna go pop this on the stovetop over medium low heat for kind of as long as it takes for those uh, stubborn little granules of GeoGuard Ultra to just disappear. Once the GeoGuard Ultra has dissolved, you can remove your water bath from the heat and then remove your beaker from the water bath. So the first thing we're going to do is weigh this and replace any water that was lost to evaporation. This water does not have to be hot because we are now trying to cool this down so that we can add our more heat sensitive ingredients. So the next two ingredients we're going to add are our hydrosol and our humectant. So I'm using sweetgrass hydrosol. You'll need 12 grams of that. This was a gift from Plants Power, but you can definitely use any hydrosol that you have and love. And I find that this completely masks the scent of the witch hazel. And then our humectant is 2.8 grams sodium lactate. If you are looking for substitution ideas, make sure you're reading the blog post linked in the description box below this video. 
So up next, we're going to add our powdered panthenol since this isn't heat sensitive. So this is 1.2 grams of powdered panthenol. And I can feel that this has you know, really cooled down a lot thanks to the addition of all these cooler ingredients. So um, we only have two ingredients left and then we are ready to check the pH and package this up. So our last two ingredients are N-acetylglucosamine and niacinamide or a vitamin B3. And so these two ingredients when paired are a fabulous brightening combination. And we have 1.2 grams of each of these. So that's 3% of each N-acetylglucosamine, which is, is this one here, vitamin B3 and vitamin B5, the panthenol. with all of the ingredients incorporated. Uh, up next is our pH test. So to check the pH of this formulation, we are going to start by making a 10% dilution of it. So I'm going to weigh two grams into this little beaker. And then we're going to add enough distilled water to make 20 grams. So two grams out of 20, 10%. If you would like to learn more about why we make a dilution, since it does seem rather counterintuitive, Make sure you are looking up pH meter uh, in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia in the equipment section. I've linked to a really helpful post from Skin Chakra about kind of how and why this works. So there's our solution. So now it's time to test it using our pH meter. So this is uh, a pH meter from Apera. And again, if you wanna learn more about it, please look it up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia in the equipment section. So I'm going to begin by rinsing it off with a bit of distilled water. It lives in a potassium chloride storage solution. So just rinsing that off there. Gently dry it off with a bit of paper towel. Turn it on and submerge it in our little beaker of testing solution. And then we just wait for the number to stabilize and the pH meter will display a little happy face when it has uh, registered a final reading. All right, so I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that there, but I just got a happy face at 5.17, which is great. So I'm gonna pull this out, rinse it again. Uh, we discard the testing solution. I'm gonna turn this off, give it another kind of gentle wipe down with a paper towel there, and then pop it back into its KCL storage solution, and then put this away until, you know, I need it again. All right, and so that's it for pH testing and adjusting because we don't need to adjust it because the pH is great for the skin, for our actives, and for our preservatives. So uh, if you wanna learn more about any of those things, make sure you are looking them up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia. But yeah, all that's left now is packaging this. So because I have uh, you know, designed this to be a mist, I'm using a mister bottle, but if you prefer your toner experience more on like a cotton pad, you don't have to use a mister bottle. So this one is uh, from Yellow Bean, what's a gift. So this is really simple to uh, package, just, you know, pour it in. Make sure you leave enough headroom to put your Mr. Top in, I think we got really fun. There we go. So for a little bit of a demo, pull our little cap off there. And there you go, you see it mists really, really nicely. Um, I do find that I prefer to use this underneath my moisturizer rather than as a final step. I just, I like something a little bit heavier uh, at the end of my skincare routine. So I'm usually using this directly after cleansing um, and then I'll put a lotion or an oil serum on top of it. But this has some lovely moisturizing ingredients in addition to brightening and soothing. So it's just a really lovely, uh, lovely thing to have in your skincare routine. And there you go. So we just made a gorgeous skin brightening toner mist. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe and please make sure you're reading the full partner blog post linked in the description box below this video. You'll find a lot more information about this formulation there, including information on substitutions, scaling, shelf life, 
links to places to purchase all the ingredients, and a whole lot more. You can also look the ingredients up in the Humble Bee and Me Encyclopedia to learn even more about them. But yeah, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.